the first question you might have is, if we're talking about things that are bigger than the counting numbers, well, fractions, right, one half is not an integer, right? The counting numbers are the <clears throat> integers, 0, 1, 2, 3, right? So fractions are not that. A half is not an integer. And how many fractions are there between 0 and 1? Infinite. How many, how many fractions are between any two fractions that you pick, no matter how close together they are? Infinite. You could just keep, keep cutting in half, right? Forever. So there's an infinite, whatever two fractions you pick, there's an infinite number between any of them. It might be a good guess that I believe it might be bigger. Maybe the rationals are over here. Maybe they're bigger than that. But on the other hand, that proof goes and shows that, well, it's not. They're actually the same size. And so what does it mean to be countable? What's our goal? Our goal is to say, well, if it's not finite, it's not. We have to find a function from z plus to q that is a bijection. If I can do that, they're the same size. If you go to the rational numbers and say, sit down, and you notice they're all sitting, and there's no empty chairs, you'd say, oh, same number of groups. If I can put the rational numbers in the Hilbert's Grand Hotel, they have to be the same size. So the hard part is, can we find such, such a function? So here's, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to look at the following, the set of all A over B, A, B are ints, and B is not 0. All right. This is not the rationals. This is bigger than the rationals, right? because I'm actually allowing things that have a common factor. And I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to go and say 0 is special. He stands all by himself. And then I'm going to write it as plus minus 1 over 1, plus minus 2 over 1, plus minus 3 over 1, plus minus 4 over 1, dot, dot, dot. And then plus minus 1 over 2, plus minus 2 over 2, plus minus 3 over 2, plus minus 4 over 2, dot, dot, dot. Plus minus. 1 over 3 plus minus 2 over 3 plus minus 3 over 3 plus minus 4 over 3 dot 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 plus minus 1 over 4 plus minus 2 over 4 plus minus 3 over 4 plus minus 4 over 4 is every is every possible int over int here yes Right, so any possible int over int is here, including those who have common factors. Now I'm going to go to this and say, OK. And from there, we can say, OK, this table contains Q. Is Q here? Yes. It actually has more stuff than Q, but it at least contains Q. Now I'm going to consider the diagonals such that a plus b is equal to n and the first diagonal is just holding 0. So I'm going to say this, diagonal, 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 diagonal. <coughs> this is n equal to 1. This is n equal to 2. This is n equal to 3. This is n equal to 4. This is n equal to 5. Now, consider those diagonals. n equals 0 has what number on it? Just 0. Sorry, n equal 1. What's n equal 2? How many numbers does it have? Just one. What's the only way that you can add to two? One plus one. Okay. Uh, n equal three. How many numbers does it have? One half and two over one. Right. Those are the only ways that you can add the three. One plus two and two plus one. N equal to four. 
What does it have? 1, 3, 2, 2, 3, 1. Those are the only ways that you can add up to 4. Are we okay with that? Now, will every number be on a diagonal? Can you think of any number over number that won't be on a diagonal? For example, uh, 100 divided by 102 is on which diagonal? The 202nd diagonal, right? You just add the two numbers. All right, if you tell me the diagonal, and not only that, can you tell me how many numbers are on that diagonal? How many numbers are on that diagonal 2? 1, diagonal 3, 2, diagonal 4, 3, diagonal 5, 4, diagonal 202. How many numbers are on there? 201. And so by doing it this way, we can say things like any A over B will have a diagonal that is always of finite length that it is on. Every diagonal is a finite length. How long is the 1,001st diagonal? 1,000. How long is the 1 million and first diagonal? 1 million. Right? Every diagonal is finite length. It just grows, grows by 1, but every diagonal is finite. Is everybody okay with that? OK. So now I have everything I need to actually create my function. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go along every diagonal and only count the rationals. So what would happen if I got to 2 over 2? What should I do? Just skip it. All right? That's not, that's not rational, so I'll just skip it. So what we're going to do, our function, is to go along diagonals 1, 2, 3, 4, dot 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 and count all the a over b plus minus that are rational. Basically what does that just simply say? What I'm really saying is simply skip any a over b with common factors. Right? That's all we're going to do. So I'm just going to go along here. And let's say I'm going to go always up the diagonals. I'm always going to go up. Then what's going to happen here is 1 gets mapped to 0 bijectively. 2 is going to go to 1. 3 is going to go to minus 1. 4 is going to go to a half. 5 is going to go to minus a half, 6 will go to 2, 7 will go to minus 2, 8 will go to, now we're down here, a third, 9 will go to minus a third, we then skip the plus and minus 2 over 2, and then we go to 10 is going to map to 3, 11 goes to negative 3, dot, dot, dot. So this is my bijection. Is that bijective? Yep, it's my bijection. Is it going to miss any rationals? Nope, one to one and on to. If there is a bijection from the counting numbers to the rational numbers, what does that tell you about their cardinalities? They're the same. I would, this would be better written down below, but I, didn't, I wouldn't be able to see my <laughs> table at the same time. Everybody okay with that? And so, because f is a bijection, we can say that the cardinality of the rationals is simply aleph null. It is countable, which is almost, it almost makes you, it's like, wait a second, between, there's an infinite number of rationals? Yes, but guess what? You can order them. You can take all of the rationals from negative infinity to infinity and order them. 
number one, number two, number three, number four, and put them in that order, and that will include all of them. Which would tell us that the numbers between zero and one would have to be, you know, the certain grouping, like every other, you know, type of things. Like when do you pick it? You know, how, where are all the? For example, you could have what was what would be all of the rational numbers that are between zero and one? Where are they going to exist? Right there, right? The entire lower half of the table skipping is where all the numbers between 0 and 1 are. That just means the bottom's bigger than the top, right? That'd be actually between minus 1 and 1. If, we, if it's just between 0 and 1, we get rid of all the negatives. So that's where they're all at. It's on the entire lower half. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> where are all the others? Upper half. So you can actually find places where certain types of rationals are. But all the rationals are here. We're just going to go through here and say, skip him. Who else did we skip? We'd skip that. We'd skip that. We'd skip that. Um, we'd skip that. Right? We can go through here and skip, show that we're going to skip certain ones because they're not rational. That, so this actually tells us that not only are the rationals count, countable, but this bigger set is actually countable. This is even bigger than the rationals because what? How many representations are there of the number one? <laughs> infinite. <laughs> I haven't. Not only does this have the rationals, it has an infinite representation of every rational in it, and it's still countable. How many ones are in here? An infinite. How many twos are in here? An infinite. How many halves? An infinite. <laughs> So not only is this the rationals, there's an infinite version of the rationals themselves, and it's still countable. It's no bigger than Aleph Null. So what, what in the world could possibly be bigger than this? So we, even, we haven't even found... So Cantor proved that you know, if there is an Aleph Null, there's going to be an Aleph 1. There's something bigger that's distinct, right? And they're actually what's, what's kind of interesting is these transfinites are countable. <laughs> Every one of which is, you know, it's like the next, next, next is countable so, but they're all not finite. They're bigger than, than this idea of finite. Okay.